So now let's take a look at Rocky Mountain Catering again in part four of this series, and let's prepare the cash flow statement. This will be the cash flow for the first year of operation. The Constructing Financial Statements videos for Rocky Mountain Catering will assist you in completing a set of financial statement assignments in this course and help prepare you for the review problem at the end of the course. We're following Rocky Mountain Catering from the formation of the firm, referred to as the initial condition, through the first year of operation. We'll use the information provided to construct a set of initial balance sheets, the company's first year income statement, a year-end balance sheet, cash flow statement, and statement of stakeholders' equity. So cash flow statements are an amalgam. They take information from both the income statement and the balance sheet. They identify various firm activities resulting in additions to cash or providing cash, supply of cash coming in, and subtractions of cash from the firm's cash accounts. So we're going to take a look at activities that the company will engage in that creates cash and activities the company will engage in that use cash. We want to know where the cash flow comes from, and we're going to find the cash flow comes from operations, investments, and financing activities. So operations is the day-to-day -day operation of the company, of course. Investments are in either buying investments, which will drain cash because we use cash to buy them, or selling existing investments, which will free up some cash. But we might need to consider what is an investment to a company. An investment is not going out and buying stocks and bonds or mutual funds or retirement accounts, unless the company's in the business of investing as its core business operation. For a company like Rocky Mountain Catering, their investments are buying smokers, buying a walk-in refrigerator freezer, uh, adding technology perhaps, uh, whatever they, whatever assets they may choose to acquire to help them create their operating cash flow. That's what a company's investments are. So if my company is a trucking company, I invest in trucks. If my company is a software company, I might invest in computers. Those things that I need to, to have on hand in order for me to be able to create income based upon the company's core operation. The financing activities of the company may also create or consume cash. Financing creates cash when we take out loans and bring cash into the company's accounts or when we allow stakeholders to invest in buying our stocks from the company, so initial offerings from the company. Financing activities that consume cash would be paying off debt or possibly buying back stock. So on the cash flow statement, notice that we have three different categories, cash provided or used by operations, cash provided or used by investments, and cash provided or used by financing activities. And we sum those up in this line item that is called the net increase or decrease in cash. So if you look at this, the 52,450 minus 28,000 minus 10,000 is going to then equate to $14,450. Let's take a look at where that came from. We've seen this before, of course. Revenues minus cost of goods sold, resulting in a gross profit of 450000 minus operating expenses of 372500 result in operating income of 77500 minus interest paid, a non-operating expense of 10000 results in taxable income of 67500 Paying taxes of 17550 results in net income of $49,950. But remember that this expense right here, depreciation, is included in all those deductions, but it was a non-cash expense. That's why we have to put it back. So we add our profits and we add back depreciation. Now let's look at the change in working capital. From the balance sheet, we're going to be looking at our current assets and our current liabilities because working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So let's look at the left-hand side of the balance sheet first. We're going to solve for cash, so we're going to ignore the cash and securities line for a moment. This $104,450 is what we're solving for. So we're only going to take a look at accounts receivable and inventory.
And we see that accounts receivable has gone up by $15,000. Well, that's money that our clients would have paid us had we not given them credit terms. They're going to pay us in the future, but since they haven't paid us yet, that's cash we didn't get that we could have gotten, and we're going to consider that a reduction to cash. So an increase in account receivable is a reduction in cash. Had we gone out and bought inventory, we didn't in this case, but had we gone out and bought inventory that we kept on our accounts, we kept on our premises, then we would have had to have spent cash to do it. Well, had we increased our inventory, it would have been a decrease in cash. So we can generalize from the left-hand side of the balance sheet an increase in current assets represents a decrease in cash. Similarly, we can think about this with the fixed assets. We increased our fixed assets by having gone from $60,000 in fixed assets or investments to $88,500. That $28,000 difference, we had to pay for that somehow. It's an increase in an asset it took cash to buy, so it's a reduction. in. So we're going to find a $28,000 decrease in cash from investments. So we're going to find a $28,000 decrease in cash from investments. We've already accounted for depreciation in the upper part of the cash flow statement where we had net income and depreciation. So we don't have to account for it. We saw net income. We saw depreciation. Here's where we see the reduction of cash of $15,000 for our increase in accounts receivable. We didn't have a change in inventory, so that's nothing. We saw an increase in accounts payable, which gave us cash of $10,000. We didn't have a change in other current liabilities, and the sum of those is $52,450. So we see the increase in accounts receivable resulting in a decrease in cash. So we're going to add a negative. We see the increase in investment activity, fixed assets. So we're going to add that. And we're going to add a negative there as well. Let's look at the right-hand side of the balance sheet now. So on the right-hand side of the balance sheet, we increased our accounts payable by $10,000. That's an addition to cash. That's money we borrowed from our vendors. But we also paid off $10,000 of our long-term debt. We didn't bring any new money from equity investors. But we did increase our retained earnings. This, re, this increase in retained earnings is already captured from the top part of the cash flow statement. So when we look at this part on the cash flow statement, here we are adding the $10,000 from accounts payable. We're adding a negative because we used $10,000 to pay off debt. And those, of course, are added to any repurchases or issuances of stock, which we haven't had any any owner's distributions, which we haven't had any. And so we've accounted for our investment activity. We've accounted for our financing activity. We've now accounted for our operations. So we take the cash from operations, cash used by investing, cash used by financing, and that results in a cash flow of $14,450. We then have the increase in cash that must be added to the cash we had on hand at the beginning of the period, resulting in our ending cash balance. So our cash flow is added to our cash balance at the beginning of the period to get the cash balance at the end of the period. And you can now see that when we solve for our cash, add it to the other entries that we have on the left-hand side of the balance sheet in the cash category, we now have a balance sheet that balances at $199,950 on each side of the balance sheet. You should now be prepared to complete the Rocky Mountain Catering cash flow statement assignment. This is the fourth in a series of assignments to assist you in better understanding the construction of financial statements and prepare you to complete the review problem at the end of the course. My name is Rick Haskell, and I'd like to thank you for watching this video as part of the Bill and Vive Gore School of Business's Business Certificate Series. I'm a finance professor in the business school, where I'm also the director for the college's Center for Financial Wellness. The Business Certificate Series is offered through the Center as part of our outreach through the Gore School of Business. You can follow us on social media through Westminster's Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook pages. You can use the QR codes provided or simply go to these websites. Thank you.